I would be mad that Edgeworth is the only one who could get away with this sort of nonsense in Corp, but he's helping us out in the end, so I guess I can't be too mad. That glass of juice. I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and I saw it in the messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the flower vase over. Hmm, so you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth, what the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. This might be our final chance. Let's try and find something to put this trial to an end. But there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour it for? Mr. Wright, there is a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be revealed to you? In other words, Wright, be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. <sighs> well, that was a complete waste of time. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Corita? I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Grr. And then, what did you see next, Witness? This whole thing is just having Phoenix make a bunch of grunting noises. Which I guess is great for Edgeworth. Okay, never mind. Slumped over. Yes, he was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. He really looked like he was sleeping. I is it just me, or did that right there sound a little odd? Then what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he'd lost the Grand Prix and then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see. So you didn't think he was dead at all? You thought he just fainted? You thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first. But then, the room was in such a messy state, I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when he went in to pour the glass of Juicy Juice. Yes, he always has a hard time waking up. So Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, what happened next? Do they even still make Juicy Juice? I never see it in stores nowadays. But apparently Arthur's still running. Apparently Arthur's the third longest running show, like TV show in all of America. Or like second? It might be second place and first place is Simpsons. But none have hold a candle in comparison to One Piece. And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I... I was shocked and straggled backward. And knocked the flower vase over. So that's what happened. Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides, and Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance to yet to kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? He said he was confused about this one, right? This one. They all sound. They all have the same thing about just her thinking that he wasn't dead. So I think any one of those would 
work for this. But it's just a matter of whether or not that's really believable. Because if you seriously didn't notice the knife sticking out of his chest and the blood rushing out of his costume. And considering how many stinking glasses she has, I find it hard to believe that she would overlook such a thing. Looks like we have our evidence. OBJECTION! So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found him? No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? <gasps> what is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There is a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Corita's chest. Anyone who saw this crime scene would have immediately thought that here was a dead man. <laughs> um, that's... well, you see... I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted. And then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink! Your point is? Miss Andrews? Your testimony just now? It was all one giant lie! Ugh. And your lie has proven one thing very clearly. That you are the real killer! No! It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Matt Angard, is not guilty after all. That... but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It... it wasn't me. It wasn't me, I tell you. It was Matt. I swear it. He was the one who killed Juan. But you were the one who refused to testify. And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself. <laughs> That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse to testify. Then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Matt Engard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is... Is it... over? Have we... Have we found the truth at last? What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually... Well, usually, the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone has it. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Matt Engard. Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. What? The reason is quite simple. Ch -ch -ch -ch. This witness has yet to speak the absolute real truth. The absolute real truth? What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head. But as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Matt Engard will go free, and in his place, you will become the guilty party. That's... that's a lie. I... I don't believe you. What? I... I was told if I spoke... If I spoke, then it would be all over, and Matt would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. 
don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do, Matt Engard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews was undyingly believes in those words right now, and is clinging onto them. Th then what should we do? This, this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is, is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help. Please. Someone. Help me. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. The court can't continue on like this. Therefore, I'd like to hear what you intend to do. What I intend to do? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who is the real mastermind behind this crime. Who's the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There's no one else it could be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come now. What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? We have to find the killer today. It's Maya's life that's on the line. If we send an innocent person to jail in place of the real killer, we could never do such a thing like that. We'd still be sacrificing somebody's life unfairly. But could we even get her to testify at this point, in the state that she's in? It's all so painful for her. But if she really isn't the killer, then it's something that she has to do. And I hope that's something she would prefer over getting taken away for something she didn't do. Even though there's nobody left. At any case, have to make sure there's no stone left unturned. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews. I would like to know what you are really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, Mr. Engard would get an acquittal, but in his place, you would be found guilty! Is this... is this how you really want this trial to end? Be quiet. How dare you? You... you're trying to trick me. That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. You're wrong. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Such a shame. I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. S Stop! Mr. Edgeworth? This witness, how should I put this, she has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Stop! Please stop! No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. Huh? That's... That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report! What will you do now, witness? You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court 
the true nature of the pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her codependent nature. Having other people know about it scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you, if people find out... If people find out, I... I'll... If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Edgeworth, how could you be so cold? However, before you die, I will pull the truth from your breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. I... I'll talk. Please, help me. Nothing matters anymore. When I first saw him, I really thought he had fainted. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Juan's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why, that's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai costume. Stab the body? With the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious to pin the blame on a certain person? A certain cowardly man. What do you mean by all this? It might take this court a little while to understand, but... This is the truth. The real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Corrida, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing Matt Engard for the murder. And this, this is her crime! What? How is this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. I really don't know what my goal is here anymore. But you could tell from the state the room was in, that there must have been a fight. Are you telling him the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck. But the scarf is a part of the Jammy Ninja costume, so... So I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. What is this plan you had? I knew right away that the murderer was Matt. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought, I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the button. The first thing that came to mind was to plant that knife. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. I slipped in, 
He took the knife and returned to the scene of the crime. So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at that time, I couldn't control my own body. It moved on its own. Then, when I stabbed one's dead body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip one of the buttons off and then plant it in Mr. Engard's Hakama? Yes, that's what I had planned to do. But things never go that smoothly, do they? An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lada. There was also a woman with a ray gun and the ready pacing back and forth. That's Miss Oldbag for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain weekly tablet once. So I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. You were the one who prepared the costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the awards ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes. Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is his secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was the real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprints when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, you went back to Mr. Engard's room and planted the button? To Matt Sakama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I snuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. My word, what does this all mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Engard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sat me down for a talk. Franziska, huh? She said that I should under no circumstances confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, your honor! The defense still- Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Miss Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as the murderer. Cross-examination of this witness is over, and so is today's trial. You couldn't establish that the witness was the culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. But, but Mr. Edgeworth, please place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That is all. Court is adjourned for today. <sighs> Today's... To 
day's trial, it's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I asked you something? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. A card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although, I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in the room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there right next to him. You found that card next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card if you ask me. But as far as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This... I can't believe you hid this from me all this time! I, I didn't mean to. What is this all about? I've never seen such an emotional Edgeworth in my entire life. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Objection!